Oh boy, how to spot a reliable broker. You know, real estate agents along with lawyers in Panama and I think the world around have the same reputation as used car salesmen. So watch out, disclaimer, it's what I do for a living. But I've been here since 2007, so the hope is to give you all a sense of just a litmus test, if you will. A few questions you can ask a broker, it doesn't even have to be us. My goal here is that people continue to buy and sell real estate and go back to their respective countries saying, yeah, it worked out. You should buy in Panama. You should sell in Panama. So, hey, if you don't use us, all good. But keep these things in mind when you're talking to a potential real estate agent. So, first of all, let's say you're looking to buy a property. A couple questions you're going to want to ask them. Hey, I see a lot of properties on your website. Are these the only properties that you have? If they try to steer you back always to their listings, that means that you are not necessarily getting a true and comprehensive picture of everything that's available on the market. That happens a lot. Be prepared. Uh, properties are often bought and sold, or I should say dual agency, i.e. the same broker. So you see a listing on my website, it's very likely that I am dealing directly with the seller. In some places around the world, that's not allowed. In Panama, it is allowed. What we do and what you might want to make sure any agent you're working with does is tell their buyers straight away or better, better, better put, find out if they're having the conversation with their seller and saying, Mr. Seller, don't tell me your bottom line. I'm taking your listing. I don't want to know your last price right now. Granted, if the agent has presented a few offers, that might be some insight for you as a buyer. But what you don't want is an agent picking sides, right? And it's hard. You need to stay neutral. Uh, our agents receive training in that. But vet your agent to make sure that, hey, are all these what happens if? Yes. Okay, what else? Take a look at your agent's listings online to make sure that they're keeping up with things. Now, you know, there's a little story I like to tell and teach my agents. It's the story of Bon Jovi. So Bon Jovi, when they were traveling back in the 80s, had like a 25 page contract that they would send to all of their venues. So the concert promoter in Los Angeles or London would have to have read this contract, agreed to it and hosting Bon Jovi for their concert. Well, in Page 32 or page whatever, 19 clause A, letter C, it said, in our waiting room, we want a bowl full of M&Ms with no green M&Ms. So what did they do? As soon as they got to the new city, they went right to the waiting room, checked the bowl. If there were green M&Ms in there, they knew who they were dealing with, which was someone that was not detail oriented and not paying attention, which means they would have to check everything. So a couple of signs to make sure that your real estate agent is a straight shooter, detail oriented, and is going to be the quarterback of the deal you're trying to get done is how does their website look? Is it tidy? Are there a lot of typos or misalignments? Again, that is just one of 20 different ways to get a sense. What do their emails look like? How quickly do they respond? How thoroughly do they answer multiple questions in one email? I've found a Latino eccentricity is if you send them, you know, the tendency is to, not in all cases, of course, but five questions, you might get three answers. So, you know, it is what it is, but beware because the agent that you use is gonna be the person, they don't just show you properties. Now, it's an important part presenting offers, negotiating the deal, following through on the contract, and then chasing everybody involved. So of course, find out about their experience, find out of which banks they've worked with. Don't say, have you worked with any banks? Say, which banks have you worked with? How many lawyers have you worked with in the last two months? How many deals have you closed in the last 
three months because experience is something you can only gain with experience, right? You can't really read about how to close a deal. You have to do it. You have to see 20 different things that could go wrong in a deal. One example, if a seller tells you how big the property is, but your buyer's agent does not verify that, then you could get all the way through the deal thinking that you're buying a 200 meter apartment when, when they, when somebody checks at the last minute that you're only getting 170 meters because that's what's registered in the public registry, that can create some problems, especially at the end. So as far as agents and experience, ask them a little bit, you know, tell me about a difficult deal you've had. It's almost like a job interview because there are a lot of us down here, right? Uh, dime a dozen. So what else? As far as finding the right property, again, on the buyer's agent side, finding the right property, well, make sure that, again, not just their listings, ask them where they go to look. Obviously, in Quentra, Compra Alquiler are big ones. WhatsApp is huge. You want a broker that's gonna hustle for you. You want a broker that's connected to the broker community. There are some people that are blacklisted. Like if you, if, if I get an inquiry from one of just a couple brokers, well, yeah, a, a few who I would never mention, saying, hey, we're looking for this. I don't even answer them, even if we have it. You know why? That's not doing my seller a disservice, trust me. Because a lot of times these guys are either fishing or so disorganized or straight up dishonest that the buyer they bring to the table, they bring to the table is either not real, not informed, not pre-qualified, or is otherwise looking to sort of trick their way into a deal. It's a really strange world down here. There's a lot of people doing real estate. What I've found is 80% of the problems and challenges that come in Panama are not because people have ill will. It's because people, and I'm not saying just Panamanians, everyone are a little sloppy. They're not really being diligent on researching the property, presenting an offer, reviewing the agreement, chasing down all the right paperwork, making sure the filings happen, making sure the filing reports get executed, making sure just, that's where the problems come in. That's where the delays come in. A lot of times agents will just sit back and let the lawyers or the bankers or the public notary sort of deal with things. A good agent is gonna hustle for you. A good agent is gonna be on top of things. So. Yeah, I mean, you want a good agent who's a good negotiator, ask them, hey, tell me about a difficult negotiation. If you really feel like vetting your guy, do it because there's always somebody else to choose from. So I think that's enough for today, right? Any questions you have, comments, put it down below. Please subscribe. We are always doing these videos. And uh, if you like what you see, you know, share, like, all that good stuff. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.